Hey folks, doing here, and well, this is going to be one of those things where I'm pretty much just going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you a book report, okay? A uh, buddy of mine threw this book at me, and it's very simply put, let me kick it over here to the other side, you can see a little better, bump it up just a tad. I'm going to be telling you guys about a book called State of Disobedience by, of all people, Tom Krautman. And I read that as King Robert Adam Time Mary Adam Nancy. And I'm using the civilian ice firms. But uh, the, the, the book is called State of Disobedience. And uh, the basic premise of the book is something very, very close to what we seem to be suffering right flipping now. Um, a despot has gotten into office and uh, they are kind of tweaking things up. Now, the, the story is, is basically the uh, the president takes place of the first woman's elected, Wilhelmina Rottenmeier. Uh, I guess you guys can read who that one was and who he really was talking about, but Wilhelmina Rottenmeier is probably the pretext um, carbon copy of... Well, I'm just going to say it. It's probably a carbon copy of uh, Hillary Clinton. And... Uh, the status in which she tries to overthrow every aspect of our standard government, our standard status of living, and removing any form of, um, well, constitutional amendment that she disagrees with. There's all kinds of thought police stuff, there's all kinds of PC action going on, and it gets to the point where she pretty much just gets the country to the point of civil war. Um... Now, what really happens is uh, basically a Waco thing type takes place, and they accidentally kill the governor's brother in Texas. Texas succeeds, and of course, this cannot be something that Rottenmeier allows to have happen should she decides to make a issue and take over to Texas. And of course, my red battery light of doom is on, so give me one second. All right, I'm back, and uh, I swear this this HD uh, tends to really eat batteries like well, little kids on uh, candy store freakouts. But uh, okay, so basically the uh, the premise is, is that you know Rodemeyer has to take over Texas. There now is a state of detente. If you know anything about Texas, Texas has their own infrastructure and in a lot of aspects. They have well, they got ocean access. Okay. They've got their own power grid. That's right. Texas is the only state in the union with its own power grid. It is not hooked into the rest of the power grid like ours are, where if one thing goes down and messes up with everybody else, no, that's 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 really not going to be the case. But Texas can succeed very simply. Texas needs to succeed very simply. Uh, they can basically create some very, very good waves in the water and really give Washington a major shakeup because they got NASA. They've got their own Gulf access. They have oil. They've got everything you possibly could want to have in your own state in one fell swoop. And you know what? If if the if the government wants to be a complete well dirt brain about it and say, well, we're just going to turn off the water and block the Rio Grande. Uh, you easily could do desalination. They have tons of seawater with which to play with. And if you decide to say they can't play with Mexico, bad times. They have a good chunk of border all into their own. And Mexico being such a huge market for stuff now because they've had a major increase in their, uh, well, their economic state, they can afford to buy a lot of stuff that Texas could produce. Now, the, uh, the state of being with this book is essentially that what we're seeing in a lot of auspices and the tyrannical stuff that they're starting to do in D.C., they already talked about in this book. Now, I would state in no way, shape, matter, or form that you probably should get a copy of this book, you probably should get a copy of Boston Tea Party, and you probably should make them your quote-unquote lesser Bibles of which to study. And if you jump over here to... Um, to uh, Amazon, you can get the Kindle edition for seven bucks. Hard covers for twenty-two bucks. Paperbacks, <sighs> paperbacks are like two bucks. Okay, used. You know, I I would say okay. Well, let's just do something really simple, stupid, and easy here. Let's just jump over here, state of disobedience, and let's go over here to eBay. So, bing, bang, boom, bang, bang, bing, bang, boom, boom, bang, and of course on eBay. There is, let's go over here, copy, 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 into the search bar, and of course, add in the guy's last name, which would be Crapman, Crapman, I don't know the pronunciation, I'm just playing with it, but 
Okay, six bucks, twelve bucks, ten bucks, ten bucks, ten bucks, ten bucks, twenty-four bucks. I would get a copy of this book, okay? A buddy of mine gave me this book, and yeah, okay, the writing is it, it, the writing is okay. I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than anything I could ever crank out, but it's not like you know, like Tom Clancy or something along those lines. It's a good book, okay? It's 2004, 2006, somewhere in there. 2005. You are going to get pissed off when you read this book. Why? Because people like... People that have been to know have been telling every single person who will listen that's what's going to happen. Have they listened? No. Did they need to listen? Yes. Dumbing down people, making them vote for Democrats, and giving them a situation which is very much like what occurred in Rome, where you give people that which they want by election, that's a democracy. Democracy is not what we have in this country. We are a democratic republic. No, we are a representative republic. We are not a democratic republic, and we had no way, shape, or means, or being of having one here. It's been inserted through the falsified auspices of fixing stuff. Just read this book, folks, okay? Or read stuff that's similar. Learn how things work. The nuts and bolts of it, yeah, it's fiction. But you know what? It's fiction based in the what-ifs that we're probably looking at right flipping now. Now, am I saying I'm going to start busting caps on guys coming down my door? Possibly. Am I going to start busting caps on people that basically I, you know, basically see as like political uh, instigators and need to get dropped? Not yet. Of that, folks, I'm going to break off on this one, playing the uh, the instigator, playing that voice of uh, social conscious, and basically letting the well the dirt bags know we know what you're doing and we don't like it. Am I saying basically we need to throw the government, you know, in, you know baby out with the bathwater? Not just yet, but you know what? When you start crossing that line of trying to knock out the Bill of Rights, you're getting really, really damn close. And it's time for basically people to start pushing back. This is not the time to stick your head in the sand and go, eh, you know, it's just the semi-autos. It doesn't really matter. You know, those Big bullet throwing magazines are horrible. We gotta block all that stuff from being out there and blah 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 blah. You know what? When you have a group of people that are euphemistically jokingly called FUDs, like Elmer Fudd, and these are the guys that say, as long as you don't get my double barrel shotgun, or as long as you don't get my over under, or as long as you don't get my two shot limited shotgun, everything is Jake. As long as I got my bolt gun and I can go hunting, everything is fine. The Second Amendment can fall by the wayside. I got bad news for you. The Second Amendment was never instituted to allow you to go out and zap Bambi or a floating clay bird. It was instituted to stop these reptiles from doing the crap they're pulling now. That's why we have the Bill of Rights. That's why we have the First Amendment that says you have freedom of speech. That's why we got the Second Amendment at the back of the First Amendment. Fourth, fifth, tenth, you know, go on down the list. It basically says you cannot have that which is yours taken from you without good uh, representation of some greenbacks in your back pocket, which actually is a piece of paper with some value. It sickens me, folks. It truly sickens me to see the incrementalism that these guys have done, and nobody's caught up with them. It's about time for people to push back and say, no more. It's about time for you to start ringing the door bell like crazy on your Congress critters. It's about time for you to fill his inbox. It's about time for you to make his computer explode from emails, and it's time to say, enough. We're done. No more. It's time to get your Irish up, folks. It's no longer time to sit back on your hands. It's no longer time to read the story in the newspaper and go, ah, oh, that's just disgusting. You know, that reptile came out of the inner city and he XYZ'd on, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, in the inner city, this person was basically zapped because the cop didn't like he did an XYZ. This is what happens when you have a police state coming into play. And that's also something else, too, folks. Class warfare. I don't give a crap about the guys in the inner city, and I don't give a crap about the guys not in the inner city. I'm thinking they basically just basically should be left the hell alone so they can live their flipping lives how they choose. But then again, you guys in the inner city, you should not be getting tons of cash off the people outside from the inner city just because you think it's some form of retribution because we were bad to you 500 years ago. 
And I got some more bad news for you, Mr. Inner City guys. It wasn't us that was enslaving you. It was your own tribes fighting with your own tribes. So that dog just won't hunt no more. It is time for you to stand on your own two feet and stop living off everybody else's hard efforts. And Mr. Government Guy, it's time for you to stop taking the money from us and feeding these guys. And also something else, too. If you guys are getting any kind of government assistance, you're a government employee. You should be working for that EBT card. You should be working for that unemployment benefit. You should be doing something besides sitting on your duff and collecting that cash and sitting in the house that we're all paying for as you're not doing a damn thing in retribution because of it. No, your retribution is you're screwing us in the process. And I meant to say repayment versus retribution, but you know what I meant. You're basically, you're grabbing out of everybody's back pockets, and you're not feeding anything back into society. Okay, if suffering is all equal, fine. You shouldn't be getting anything from anybody's back pocket, because we're not making enough. That's how you fix stuff. If I'm not making enough money and everybody's being taxed to death, you don't get either. That's how you fix things. But, I'm also going roundy, 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 round, but... This stuff has got to stop, okay? It's really, truly got to stop. Or you have the states that say, you know what? We're not doing it any longer. We're out of here. I can tell you for a fact, you could pretty much run up a straight line in the United States. You could go from Montana to Texas almost in a straight line with a little bit of, you know, another state in the way. You could almost run north to south and you would go from Canada to Mexico and these states could break off and say, you know what? This piece of you that goes through the piece of us that we want back, we're taking back. That state, that part of your state is no longer your state. It's ours. We've now claimed it. That's how stuff works when you really get things going bad. And I can tell you for a fact, folks, we're not quite on the cliff. We're not quite on the edge. But we're starting to go down the hillside, slip down the gravel path, and we're starting to look at the cliff on going to our path of travel. And that's never a good thing when you start talking about stuff like this. But here's the reason for the Second Amendment. When you are seeing stuff like this, you can arm up. And Obama, I hope you're really happy because you're about the best damn gun salesman in history of this country. When you sell out two years worth of PMAGs in the course of not even a month, dude, Thank you very much. You know, all you've done now is basically make all those people pull their heads out of the sands and go, hmm, maybe I should approach this in a different manner. And I guess you guys are getting tired of looking at that one, so let's jump over here again. You guys are getting tired of looking at that page, so I fixed it. But the situation is such that we need to fix things now. And I'm not saying go out and whack every single person hanging from a pole like Mussolini, but I'm saying, you know what, Mr. Elected Official, you took an oath to defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. All right, I'm not going to keep you guys much longer because I'm running up on my 15 minutes, and I try not to run longer than that, but things are coming to a head. Get State of Disobedience by Tom Kroutman. I guarantee it will be a hell of a good read, and you will not be disappointed. And you might also have a couple bits of uh, forethought for stuff ongoing. Uh, by the way, Hillary Rottenmeyer... I hope you try to become president. I really, truly really hope you try to become president. Because stuff like this, sometimes you got to answer it, well, like kind. All right, folks, so uh, from here on in and, uh, well, from any part on what I can think of, keep your powder dry, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Eat good, keep the ten ring, and as always, always, you know what, here in the 80s Podcast Channel, I'm going to definitely give you, like, a lot of poop. I'm going to tell you the straight stuff. Good times. First.